Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with some more Dragalia Lost. Today's video, we finally have info about the Fire Emblem Heroes Mana Spirals, so I'm going to be going over them and talking about them and doing all that good stuff now that we finally have news for it. Fire Emblem event should start at reset. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to be doing that today. And if you remember, if you end up liking this video, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe to me if you want more video stuff about Dragalia, or in, in general. And also make sure to comment about which one of them, which one of these is your favorite so far for these specific units. So let's go down to Marth. Start with Marth. He deals flame damage to the enemies directly ahead, inflicts burn, and gradually recovers the user's HP for 15 seconds. Um, Fire Emblem. Deals flame damage to the enemies in a line. Burning foes takes extra damage. Also activates skill shift if the attack connects. If the attack connects. Phase 1 increases the user's strength by 10% for 10 seconds. Phase 2 increases the entire team's strength by 10% for 10 seconds. And phase 3 increases the entire team's strength by 10% and their attack rate by 30% for 10 seconds. Co-op ability is Dragon Haste 15%. Chain co-op ability is above 10 hits equals strength 13%. Last boost is fill 100% of the entire team's skill gauge twice when he hits, uh, fills 100% of the entire team's skill gauge when he drops below 30% twice. So it, it can activate twice, it used to only activate once. This does not fill the skill gauge of dragons, after activation it cannot be activated again for another 15 seconds. Potent stun resistance 100%. When he hits, gets hit, when he he reduces the susceptibility to stun by 100%, and if he gets hit by it, he increases his strength by 15% for 10 seconds. Doesn't activate again for 15 seconds though. Uh, whirlwind devastation 13 plus 13% increases critical rate by 13% when the combo count is 10 or higher. So that is Mars Mana Spiral, and out of all the Mana Spirals, this one is the most clearly like, holy god, this is insane. Um, so first of all, he now deals flame damage he didn't used to on his skill 1. That's huge, because the reason Zanya is so good is the fact that she can inflict so much burn, and now Marth has the ability to just cause burn. Uh, Marth, when I was revisiting him from all the Fire Emblem units, I think he was the one that held up the most. He felt like one of those units that you could still use today, it just so happened that um, people preferred Yuden because he had more might to him and, you know, some other reasons or so. But... With this buff, with all the boosts he's going to get to his um, stats and everything, I think this puts Marth pretty high up there. It is hard to look at um, that phase 3 skill of Fire Emblem where he gives 10% and 30% attack rate. That's insane. I You will be dealing so much damage with that. And also, Burn is also very good. And the rest of him is really well built too. Like a chain co-op ability where, so that you can probably use him with um, Ezalef, for example. Um, I think it works. He works out really good. I think Marth has done, been done justice with this one. So I think he's going to be the first one I'm going to Mana Spiral for sure to play with him and test him out. Alright, let's go on to Fjorm now. I think they did a great job from this one, uh, by the way. I think... Funny thing is, is that when I look at Marv, I'm like, yeah, this just is what he did previously, but better. <laughs> to be fair, he was already still pretty good. Um, Alright, let's go into Fjorm now. Deals water damage to the enemy directly ahead and inflicts freeze and frostbite. She didn't used to not inflict free, uh, frostbite. <laughs> Excuse me. Ice Mirror. Summons an Ice Mirror that deals water damage to the target and nearby enemies. Additional bonus damage will be dealt relative to the damage taken while Ice Mirror is active. Also restores 8% of the damage inflicted as HP to the user. The recovery caps at 30% of their maximum HP. HP 15%. Water Frostbite equals user strength 13%. Less Bravery. Increase the entire team's strength by 30% and the defense 40%. For 15 seconds when the user drops to 30%, twice can activate twice. Uh, will not activate again. Um, for 15 seconds after it activates. Potent burn resistance, 100% burn resistance, and if she would be inflicted by burn, increase strength by 15% for 10 seconds. Skill prep, 100% and skill charge, fills 100% of the skill gauge at the start of the quest, using a skill, fills skill gauges at 5%. Alright. So, Fjorm. This was always going to be a tough one. I think for Frigid Smash, that's fine. I think the only thing that they changed for Frigid Smash is that now she inflicts Frostbite, which I guess is like a really basic one. 
um, Ice Mirror was always going to be kind of the problem with Fjorm. Because in order to make Ice Mirror good, you needed to do something like she couldn't get killed when taking damage. Because by the way, you can still get super killed and uh, taken out of Ice Mirror uh, when using it. Uh, the only difference now is that you'll be able to heal at least 30% of that damage taken, but I don't know. This one is the most, I don't know. So here's another thing, which is something unfortunate. I think we're not going to see a lot of Fjorm. Uh, just the way Fjorm's built, I don't really see her seeing much of a chance in High Brunhilde, which is currently the only thing you need a water unit for. I think for all purpose, just having fun, Fjorm will be perfectly fine if you mana spiral her. But for higher level content, it's a different story. She's not really built for specifically High Brunhilde. Even though, I, as I've mentioned in her video, there is a way to use, I think, four Fjorms to take down uh, High Brunhilde, but I don't know. For this one, I, this is definitely... So here's another thing is that's making me a little bit hesitant, is that the last time I kind of felt unsure about Mana Spirals, it was the last batch of Shadow Spiral ones for the threes. And I remember reading those and just kind of going like, man... This might be the first time a Mana Spiral just isn't that good. And then it turned out one of them, Vice, is one of the best Shadow Unit DPSs in the entire game. So we're going to have to wait and see for Fjorm, because we need to see how much, um, how better her Mana Spiral makes her in general. Because that's one of the things that's kind of like hard to gauge at the moment. Because it could be that the second she comes out, it's like, oh, she has insane mods added to her, so now she deals so much damage that actually, yeah, you would use her on... Um, High Brunhilde or something. This is, but it's one of those things where I'm like, I think we won't see her, Fjorm actually shine until like um, we get the Water Gito. She has a better chance for that, just because units like her don't really fry, thrive super well in High Brunhilde, and that's only the only event currently that uses Water units. So that's what I feel. If you feel different, make your case for her. I'll gladly read that. I would love to see someone's. Uh, feeling on her that's super positive veronica okay so she now deals shadow damage to the target and nearby enemies poison foes take extra damage damage will increase the user's hp decreases if the user's hp is above or equal to 40 percent of max hp it consumes 10 percent of the max hp to fill this gauge's skill gauge by 20 percent Nosferatu deals shadow damage to the surrounding enemies and restores 8% of the damage inflicted as HP to the user. The reco recovery caps at 23% of the maximum HP. Co-op ability skill damage plus 15% increases the attack skill damage by 15%. Shadow units HP below 40% equals light resistance plus 10%. Last destruction 3 increases the damage to the next attack skill used by the each team member by 10% and the user's attack skill by 30% for the remainder of the quest when the user's HP drops by uh, 30%. Okay, wait, so increases the damage of the next attack skill used by each team member by 10%. Okay, opponent paralyzed uh, resistance 100%. It's like the others except for, for paralyze. <laughs> skill prep 100% and skill charge. Fills 100% of the skill gauge at the start of the quest. Using a skill, uh, using a skill uh, increases it by 5%. There you go. <sighs> So Veronica, she's real good now. So of course, like all shadow units, she now has the ability to poison punish. The good thing is, is that she doesn't actually inflict poison herself. Um, that's neither like neither here nor there, because really all you really need is one person to kind of be the person who inflicts poison a whole bunch, and then the other person can just gladly deal extra damage from it. Because I believe the reason for that is, is that poison has a limit to how many times it can actually be applied to something and then it just stops right afterwards. So her just dealing damage and not necessarily dealing shadow dam uh, poison herself is perfectly fine. Her last ability got completely changed because it used to be that I believe that everyone just got 40%. Uh, actually, I can look right here. Duh -duh. Okay, let's see. Yeah, so it used to increase the damage of the next attack skill used by each team member by 40% when the, when the user's HP dropped by 30%. So now she gives 10% to the allies, and then she herself gets a permanent 30%, which is nuts. That's great. The only thing that's kind of bad is that she can't bring herself to... Um, 
she can't do that herself. As you can see here, using skill one will only have, won't drop her below 50%. The only, which is a shame because you kind of want her to go down by like 30, so you still have to kind of hope to take some damage there, but it's fine overall. Uh, I think she'll still deal a lot of damage. Her Nosferatu has more healing now. And also, just in general, it looks like you're just going to be wanting to constantly spam skill one. I could see her definitely being used in something like um, uh, Jupiter at the moment. And maybe also Kai. I think when I was reading through the Trash, Al Trash Alliance, she might have a rough phase one of Kai. But phase two, she's just going to be insane. Insanely powerful. So... I'm looking forward to this one. All shadow units kind of get crazy buffed from Mana Spirals, and it looks like Veronica's the same way, but she looks 100% usable. How strong she's going to be is going to be... Well, she's she already is very built strong, but I can't wait to see how far that extent goes when we see the full... the breadth of it, basically. All right. So that's a very good. And finally, we have Alphonse. Okay. Blue Radiance increases the user strength by 20% for 12 seconds, deals light damage to the enemies directly ahead, and inflicts paralysis. Soul deals light damage to the surrounding enemies and restores 5% of the damage inflicted as HP to the user. This recovery capped at 20% and their maximum HP. Damage will be increased at the user's HP decreases. Dragon Haste 15%. Chain Co-op ability light HP 60% equals strength 6%. Last Burst 3 Increases strength by 40% for 10 seconds and increases strength by 10% for the remainder of the quest when the uh, when the user's HP drops to 30%. Potent Curse, it's like the others, but with Curse now. Skill Haste, 10%. Increases Skill Gauge Fill Rate by 10%. Um, so yeah. So one of the main things about the change here is that it's no longer 50% just in general. Now it's 40% for 10 seconds, but then he gets the 10% strength increase throughout everything. So that's a good change. I think that ends up working for him. 10%, <laughs> I kind of feel like they could give him a little bit more, but this is another unit where like, it's a little bit rough. So I'm actually, I actually asked Lerp because I, again, the only thing, as I mentioned in the last video that Light is currently used for is High Zordiarc. So I asked Lerp how he function in High Zordiarc. So I have his response right here. Let me see. Yeah. Let me just read up what Lerp says right here. Um, so in a nutshell, he could, he could be used for High Zordiac, but he isn't ideal and doesn't fit with the current meta. His kit is super selfish in general, but conceptually he isn't too bad for learning the game. The biggest problem with him in High Zordiac is, is particular is that you will still need at least one Guidin, which is the Gala Guidin, or Gala Prince, in, H, uh, in uh, High Zordiac, with the current meta, still be ugh, current meta still being Sword, you may be turned away for not being uh, uh, the Gala Prince. He also paralyzes on skill 1, which probably isn't ideal since Mitsu paralyzes too, and uses Punisher Prince. It might not be too bad though. Yudin paralyzes too, but I think in skill 2 only. Uh, then I asked him, so kind of wait and see how the tests come out. It has potential, but High Zordiac meta is too set in place. High Zordiac meta is too set in place. Yeah, it's unlikely the chance either causes High Zordiac is kind of DP. Yeah, it's, un it's unlikely the chance either cause... High Zordiac is kind of a DPS race. The High Zordiac meta is the way it is because it's important to break him before the first minute, before a minute in, and have someone with Dragon tank the marker immediately afterwards. If his modifiers are high enough, he could probably be the fourth flex spot, but I don't know. I don't think it could seek him out over his last burst. I don't think I would seek him out ever. His last burst, too, seems like it's only personal DPS. If it affected everyone, then it would be much better. Because that would be used to help burst down the uh, the overdrive or get to it. Too long didn't read. My verdict is good. He is good in individual play and for lower level content, but too selfish to excel in higher level content without taking a DPS slot. If his DPS outshines someone like Mitsu or Galaluka, then he might take their spot instead. I said, sounds kind of like a tall task for a free to play unit. It's possible. It's ha it's happened before. Uh, and there you go. Man. Okay. So yeah, that's him. <sighs> so yeah, that's the Mana Spirals. That was a lot to read out, so I hope that made sense. <laughs> um, I'm going to be, I think, 
I think I'm gonna, at least I'm gonna manage Spyro Morph, I'm definitely gonna do Veronica, and then I'll see how I feel about Fjorm and um, Alphonse. I definitely would like to do them for a video. Uh, but now here's the qu the question. Are these all, are these buffs good enough now to justify summoning for them in the Fire Emblem event? <sighs> It's a hard question. I, I don't feel confident in ans answering this question just because like there has been that one case where I was just like completely wrong about the mana spirals makes me feel like I don't want to give a judgment on anything until I know fully how good these mana spirals for these characters are. Because again, the part one that's coming up will eventually lead into another Fire Emblem event. And in that case, it's like, it's hard to justify something like that, but... I don't know. Thankfully, I don't have to summon. So basically, I'll let the units speak for themselves, and then you can make the decision yourself if you want to summon. Uh, I'll never fault anyone for summoning for the units that they care about, honestly. Honestly, if you love the for any of those four dudes, I think it's perfectly fine to go three dudes, because Alphonse is free. So if your only character you care about is Alphonse, then hey, guess what? You get him for free. But for the other three, hmm hard especially if we don't know if there's any free summons and we don't know who's on the horizon but i would say if you're a fan of any of these characters i think it's worth getting at least one of them but if you have not a lot of supply hold on to them <laughs> so use caution is what i'm saying as always um when you go chasing units always use caution and of course we're also getting a new chapter tomorrow so you know what plenty to do uh, so that's the, that's the end of today's video. Tell me about your current thoughts on the Mana Spirals, if you're going to be summoning, all that good stuff, who you like best, stuff like that. If you've gone this far and you're still not subscribed to me, please subscribe. I make Dragalia stuff, and I play a lot of other video games too, so if you ever get bored with Dragalia, I have other games. <laughs> uh, that's it. Alright everyone, have a good day, and I'll see you guys for the start of the Fire Emblem event. Peace!